Tuesday, March 5th, 11.30 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Guys, we're here at windy.com, and you can see why we're here. The elephant in the room, this very large, low-pressure system off the west coast of the United States. It's been there for several days, as I've been watching that for several days, as it's been stationary, pretty much. It hasn't really moved. This is a screenshot from nullschool.net from March 4th. And I was watching this clear into the latter part of last week. It was just sitting here, just rotating. Looked like a big hurricane, even though it's not technically a hurricane because it doesn't have the high wind speeds. This is officially a extra tropical cyclone. And that comes from NOAA, not me. Um, the only reason it's not a hurricane is because of the wind speed. It doesn't have a collective wind speed that's equivalent to a uh, hurricane or typhoon. So it's known as an extra tropical cyclone that does have unique features. We've had them before. In fact, one back in 1993 was referred to because of its strength as the storm of the century back in 1993. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, we've since had many major storms since that storm. But it was also a extra tropical cyclone. What this storm is doing, it's making landfall here in California, Oregon. It's going to come inland. It's going to dip south, come into Texas. And this is where there's going to be a mighty clash in the atmosphere. Warm air coming up from the Gulf, colliding with the cooler air. This is primarily cooler air. It's got some rain in it, but not a whole lot. California will see, in some places, an inch and a half, an inch. The elevations will see a significant amount of snow in the Sierra Nevadas. But again, that's not uncommon to see three or four feet of snow up there. But that's what they're looking at. Here's another look at this extra tropical cyclone. And again, it's not a typhoon or hurricane. It's simply a scientific term. They give these storms that do happen frequently. Sometimes they are overachievers, which this one here unfortunately does have the potential to become an overachiever and I'll explain why. All of this is moving from the west to the east. As it gets closer to the central part of the U.S. it's going to turn and head towards the Gulf of Mexico through Texas. You can see right here this movement that's following the jet stream basically. There's going to be a collision there that's going to generate some very unstable atmospheric conditions high in the sky above Texas parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, southeast Oklahoma. That collision come this weekend, Saturday into Sunday, primarily Saturday and late Friday. There are going to be the, the possibility multiple tornadoes, large hail, high winds, especially in the state of Texas. The farther north you go, you can see this storm getting more and more organized or reorganized as it's crossing the United States. That's where it's going to turn into something quite significant. See these isobars here? The lines that are really close together? That represents high winds and the purple represents snow and a lot of it. Up in Minnesota, Wisconsin, you guys are going to see yet more snow. And that's not going to be the end of it yet. There's more on the way. The only reason I'm talking about this one is because we are basically around 72 hours out. These forecast models can and will change. But usually three days out, they're pretty solid. So back to Adventure Sky. What we're looking at here is the atmospheric stability, basically, on Friday, March 8th at 11 a.m. And you can see the conditions above Texas are very favorable for severe weather. This is what the atmosphere looked like above Alabama and Georgia a couple of days ago, and it wasn't even this intense. This is about as high as it goes on the charts, guys. As far as atmospheric disturbances go that are favorable for tornadoes and severe weather. Let me show you what the uh, conditions look like over Alabama and Georgia on March 3rd. This is the same index that we're looking at. And you can see that the, the darker the burgundy, the stronger the atmospheric disturbance. And unfortunately, on the day of the tornadoes, which I'm not even going to talk about that, and I just want to say I'm very sorry to everyone that was involved in these tornadoes. They were not good. But you can see the lifted index, which is the atmospheric disturbance above those areas, and that's exactly where these tornadoes spawned. We're looking at the same type of scenario, the same type of setup right here in east central Texas and into Louisiana and Arkansas and again southeast 
Oklahoma Friday and Saturday. Those numbers, those negative threes, negative sixes, you're going to see negative eights and nines around Texas. In fact, at one point, there's a negative ten. Let me see if I can find it right here. Screenshot. This would be south and west of Dallas, the Fort Worth area. All of this very dark burgundy, that's minus ten. The chart only goes to minus nine. So conditions will be highly favorable for tornadoes. And ironically, this storm system that is forecasted here at VentureSky.com and WeatherCharts.com, they're all in agreement, is almost 26 years to the day from the superstorm of 1993. The storm didn't have a name, but it was a extra tropical cyclone. That's how it started. And you can see it turned into this huge storm system. And that's what this one's going to do as it makes its way across the United States. This is from 1993. We've seen these before since 1993. But back then, this was referred to as the storm of the century. And you can see the similar features from the storm that we're going to be seeing here in a few days over the Midwest and with this storm here. Granted, this one here looks considerably larger but this one hasn't formed yet. It's just forecasted to. But it's going to have a lot of inclement weather in it, all the way from southern Canada down into the Gulf of Mexico. And that's how this one was. Southern Canada all the way down through Cuba and into the Caribbean. I mean, it was a huge, huge storm. This is the first, the one over here on the left, that's the first of quite possibly two and in 1993, this was referred to as the storm of the century. It spawned many tornadoes. One, two, three, four, five, about 12 right through here, courtesy of this, at the time, storm of the century. I think we've probably seen bigger storms than that now. But guys, there's another one coming. And if you're in the state of Texas, Arkansas, I made a little map here. Okay, here's a little map I put together for this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Not Sunday, just Friday and Saturday. I don't like to go too far out. Because, again, forecasts can and will change. And hopefully this one will change. But right now, this is the setup. Friday and Saturday. Especially Friday. This first purple circle you see. Very uh, significant snowfall and high winds. In the, in, especially in the elevations. The possibility of tornadoes, large hail, and high winds. Friday into Saturday. In the Texas area, everything you see in red over through Arkansas, even into Tennessee, lower Missouri, lower Illinois, parts of Louisiana, about the uh, entire western half of Louisiana, and far northwestern Mississippi, and all of northeastern Arkansas, in, actually including the entire state of Arkansas, pretty much. So if you're in this red zone, just know that on Friday and Saturday, conditions are going to be very favorable for tornadoes, we could be looking at another storm of the century scenario like we saw back in 1993 that originated from what the good guys and gals over here at NOAA are referring to as an extra tropical cyclone. And that's what you see churning right now out here in the Pacific Ocean. And this has been out here for several days. This is over here at Twitter. I just retweeted their, their tweet about this, this system. And you can see here from ubinet.com, moderate to heavy rain and mountain snow late today. They're talking about today. This is a, an article dated March 5th with uh, flooding possible because they're already dealing with flooding conditions up in Northern California. And that's where the majority of this rain is headed to Northern California, but not to exclude Central and Southern California as they're going to see in some places an inch, maybe a half an inch. Up in the mountains, you can see one to four feet locally higher in some places. I did see an estimate that showed 60 inches down here in the central part of the Sierra Nevadas, uh, just adjacent from, I want to say, Stockton, up in the elevations, quite possibly 50 to 60 feet of, or 50 to 60 inches of snow. But they're calling this big storm system out here, guys, a extra tropical cyclone. We've seen these before. We'll probably see them again in the future. But look out. Uh, big heads up on Friday, guys, especially Friday into Saturday. And some of these could be after dark tornadoes, which no tornado is good. 
but when they're after dark and you can't see anything that's that's potentially coming your way that kind of compounds the situation and makes it even worse but this area you see right here in the burgundy this is friday morning at 11 o'clock conditions will start to become very favorable for severe weather in this area so just be ready guys i've been watching this for a few days this is the storm system right here that's going to get caught up in the jet stream then warm moist air from the gulf of mexico they're going to meet right above texas arkansas louisiana right in this area here thanks for watching have a super day and be safe out there